In this video, we will be taking a journey through the obscure history and authorship of the Serenity Prayer. Hey everybody, and welcome to Position Recovery. My name is Jeremy Grogan with Position Studios. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to this channel and enable notifications. Don't forget to click the bell icon and select all from the menu. Also, if you appreciate the content that I provide and think I do a good job, please share this video on social media, give this video a thumbs up, and most importantly, commenting and engaging with others in the comments helps to build and promote an active, online recovery community. And with that, let's get right to it. All right, let's start here with a Google search. We find that uh, a search for serenity prayer through history links us to Wikipedia. So we're gonna, we're gonna head, go ahead and go there. Ultimately, Wikipedia is a great place for us to start here. The um, Wikipedia is gonna show us that the, the prayer is, well, first of all, it's gonna start with, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So that's that's what most people we would understand that in uh, the recovery uh, meetings, we would we would understand that version of the prayer. Now, that's not the original prayer though. So what I have what I've learned is uh, we're going to take a step back into into history, and um, let's ex let's actually go there. So this is interesting. We find uh, I find an article, the secret. History of the Serenity Prayer, and this, this is kind of a shocker. This is interesting. So it starts off and says, AA's most famous touchstone was written by an anti-Nazi theologian who was battling against an evil beyond his control. For many people who attend 12-step programs, reciting the Serenity Prayer comes as naturally as breathing. So it may come as a surprise to learn that the prayer was originally conceived not as an antidote to addiction, but in response to the barbaric evil of Nazi Germany that threatened civilization itself during World War II. We're going to scroll down here to a section, and we're going to see when it was first published. The original version of the famous prayer was delivered by Niebuhr at the conclusion of a sermon he delivered at Tiny Union Church in Heath, Massachusetts, a farming village where he summered with his family. At the time, the United States was still mired in war on the Western Front. Now, we notice from a just basic Google search, they're going to say that 1943 was when he delivered the sermon. And so we want to remember those dates because I got something towards the end of the video I want to keep as a, like a little nugget, a little surprise uh, that has really been um, discovered within the last, uh, I'd say, six years. Uh, so it was discovered in, in um, well, not discovered, but re rediscovered or recovered or however you want to say that in about 2014. So I'll leave that one for us. So stick around and watch the whole video so that you can get that. But let's scroll down here to um, to the portion where we're going to talk about how it connected to AA. Niebuhr's serenity prayer struck an immediate chord. His Massachusetts neighbor, Dean Howard Robbins of the Federal Council of Churches, asked Niebuhr if his little prayer could be included in material that the council provided to army chaplains in the battlefield. In 1944, it was published for the first time, the Book of Prayers and Services for the Armed Forces. At the time, Alcoholics Anonymous was still in its formative years. Someone in the fledging fellowship apparently saw the short prayer and brought it to the attention of AA founder Bill Wilson. With Niebuhr's permission, Wilson began using the shortened version of the prayer in meetings he led in his wife's house in Brooklyn in Akron, Ohio, where he was working with Dr. Bob Smith to convert alcoholics to sobriety. Less lyrical and less theologically complex, the plea for God's grace is eliminated and the things that should be changed became the things that can be changed. So this is interesting. So here's, here's what we collect right now. Out of the information that we've gone through so far, we know that the prayer was published first in 1943. We know that the prayer was longer at that time. Um, we're going to look at what that looked like. And it was shortened by with permission from the founders of AA. So 
this answers my original question or my initial question, which is which version of the prayer was the original? So the longer version of the prayer is the one that is uh, more original. Now, here's here's what I want to want to do right now, because in my initial research, and if you go to the Wikipedia page and you look through the Serenity Prayer at the bottom, the very first reference uh, is going to be from Fred Shapiro, who wrote an article, and I clicked on that article, and we come up here to the web la uh, landing page of the Chronicles of Higher Education, the Chron Chronicle Review, and the title of this article is Who Wrote the Serenity Prayer? Now, some background, because I don't want to go through all this in, in some detail, but um, Fred Shapiro originally wrote an article in 2008 where he criticized or he, he basically said that it was not known and that no one could know who wrote the um, the Serenity Prayer. He did understand that people had attributed it, the, the Serenity Prayer to, uh, to Nibon, but he was saying that it's unlikely or that he was trying to make a case that Niebuhr was not the author. Well, some information had come out and he did some more research and ultimately he comes out with this article that we're seeing here where he realized that uh, he needed to take some more work. He did some more work and he he did some searching. And um, there, there's really only one nugget that I want to share here, but you feel free to read the article. So I will link uh, this in the description box. But it's really interesting because I we we have the, the initial or the first time this thing was published was in 1943. But I'm going to tell you, it has its roots back to 1932. And we're going to take a look at that right now. So um, like I said, you can read the whole article getting up to here. But Schlesinger College or Schlesinger Library is a library housed at Harvard. And um, the author of this article reached out to uh, Schlesinger staffers. Uh, Sari, Sarah Guzzi, and it says right here, uh, Schlesinger staffer Sari, Sarah Guzzi struck gold when she read Weigel's diary entry from October 31st, 1932. Weigel wrote there, RN, so back in 1932, she's referencing uh, Reinhold Niebuhr, that moral will plus imagination are two elements of which faith is compounded. The victorious man in the day of crisis is the man who has the serenity to accept what he cannot help and the courage to change what must be altered. So already in 1932, uh, Reinhold Niebuhr is developing the concepts that are later going to be used in developing the prayer that we see in the 1943 manuscript or the book of prayers that we saw in the previous article. So really exciting to, to actually see how this kind of unfolded. So the original prayer uh, so had some language in it, and we'll look at it right here. O oh God and Heavenly Father, grant us the serenity of mind to accept that which cannot be changed, courage to change that which cannot be changed, and wisdom to know one from the other through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So all those, those of you that think that the serenity prayer was altered to add Christ to it later, that's not true. Uh, Reinhold was a, uh, a theologian, and he, the, the, it's the opposite that is true, is that the shorter version was adapted to the AA uh, community. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, it's, uh, it's important to know that when we say these prayers, that they do come from a place and they came with a specific intent. And so um, trying to avoid Christ in, in things like this when the prayer was intended this way um, doesn't do ultimately a lot of justice. I think that the, um, you know, the first stanza that everyone's common, commonly knows is, is absolutely soul food. It's good for anybody to understand. Uh, we're just, I think that we get in trouble when we start removing God and we start removing Christ and we start removing those kind of things. All right, so guys, the consensus, it looks like, like this is what the prayer was in 1943, the one that was um, that was put in the book, the the prayer book that we saw in in that uh, in the article that will be posted. So I will do a little bit of for, uh, future research, and if I can find if I can actually find that article or the the prayer book, that would be interesting to see what that actually says. But to, to the best that I can see from all the research and everything that I looked at, this is the Serenity Prayer in 1943. God give us the grace, or God give us grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, 
courage to change the things which should be changed, and wisdom to distinguish the one from the other, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus, some manuscripts say he, taking as Jesus did or taking as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. I just thought this would be a fun video to put together so that we could take a look at the history. I wanted, I personally just wanted to know, you know, which one's the the full, the original, okay? So um, I think I want to do another separate video where I actually talk about the serenity prayer and go line by line and just have a conversation and discussion about what each line of the serenity prayer means and what it would look like to apply that. Or if if we're in a, a, a state or a place of, of really not being able to process that yet, maybe kind of speculating or just having a conversation around um, w what it really means to have serenity, to have the courage and the wisdom to, to know the difference between the two. So without really anything else to say, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, share the video, like, subscribe, and until next time, remember, many are called, but you are positioned.